Broadcasting live from Slagwoods Bridge on the plain of Mirrodin, this is Tap Tap Concede. Welcome everybody to Tap Tap Concede. My name is Graham and joining me is Cameron. Hello. And Nelson. Hi there. A reminder before we begin that Tap Tap Concede is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run and our good friends at Card Kingdom. Check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR. Let's them know that we sent you over there and we do that routinely because we like them and they're good folks and they'll sell you cards for a good price and ship it to you really really fast and you can tell them loading ready run sent me a button please and they'll give you a little one inch button which right now says changelings are cowards i completely redid the order of how i said that and it almost messed me up i don't know why i did it that way but here we are anyway today on the show it's a q a episode it's the i was gonna say summer but it's not we did a loading ready run youtube update over on the loading ready run channel and i called it the spring update because it's not technically summer until 21st of june and people were like huh spring it's like yeah it's yes it is yes, spring it is literally spring this is what spring is it's yeah. true but I don't know if this is... I'm, I'm just going to call this one the June 2021 Q&A to avoid... But Graham, but Graham, I'm listening to it in July. Hmm. No. Oh. James is letting us know, actually, that by the time that the, the, this recording, this podcast is available, it's going to be summertime. But what if we want to do another Q&A in, like, late August or uh, early September? <laughs> just call it part two, says James. All right, well, fair enough. Or even mid-September. So we, we put out the call on the LRR MTG Twitter account for some questions, and James has collated a bunch of them, and uh, I have them here. But before we get to that, this surprised us in that we had already planned that this was going to be a Q&A episode. And then Wizards went and dropped new secret layers or announced the intent to drop new secret layers. They go on sale possibly the day you hear it. They, they, they go on sale two days from now. And we're not going to go too deep on them because we do want to make sure that we get to the questions, at least the questions that we pulled aside. But holy moly, there's so many cards. I will try to move fairly briskly and then either of you please feel free to jump in if there's something you want to talk about in more detail first up is the saturday morning DD set which is cards with art inspired by the old dungeons and dragons saturday morning cartoon show and Whoa. it's very very silly it's uh commander sphere heroes downfall impact tremors primal vigor unbreakable formation and whir of invention with the old not particularly good art from the old dungeons and dragons saturday morning cartoon show yeah that uh, this is something yeah yeah sure is i think i'm gonna pass on this one i like that it exists i think yeah, it's funny yeah. and neat but i'm like yeah I, just, I don't love it various <laughs> people's yeah. uncles are going to buy them this yeah right um a lot of ones this round leaning into particular artists which mm -hmm. is kind of cool so there's the ne second in the artist series we've had artist series seb mckinnon already and now this is artist series mark pool who, whose art you can see has improved greatly over the years because it's got some of his original art from birds of paradise and counterspell and god i love howling mine the old howling mine uh, some of these appearing in the modern card frame for the first time and then some newer art for balance and brainstorm oh and wasteland is in here as well so that's cool the the og birds of paradise and the counter spell with the 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 like whittled fingers i don't know the like pew yeah the the slide whistle spell yeah fizzle fingers i'm just looking at this one for the first time and like if you play canadian highlander and don't have at least i don't know two of these cards you probably want to jump on this mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. is just a quite good deal yeah like wasteland plus anything really is pretty yep, like pretty solid birds and balance and even I mean, Counterspell, I guess, has been reprinted a bunch lately, but Counterspell, like, I don't know, throughout my career of working at Yellow Jacket, like, has at various times been $2, and, like, same goes for Brainstorm. I don't know. A lot of these cards are probably pretty easy to get now, but Birds of Paradise often has been kind of expensive if it hasn't been reprinted recently, and Wasteland has been up to, like, 50 bucks or more before, so, I don't know. Just, just seems like a lot of value here. Yeah. And some cool pictures. There's two different secret layers with special guest artists. So we've got special guest Fiona Staples, who's a mm -hmm. comic book artist worked on saga yeah probably most famous for saga yeah so dryad of the elysian grove metallic mimic i love the metallic mimic uh sakura tribe elder Ooh. soul scar mage and spell queller very cool stuff there yes. and that then, might be my new favorite steve art it's a very good art for sakura tribe elder yeah and then also a special guest jen bartell yeah who has recently done like a uh, run on wonder woman mm -hmm. and so she's illustrating archaeomancer bloom tender mesa enchantress and meteor golem one day i will find 
find out what happened to my Bloom Tender. I was just going to say, is this the first reprint of Bloom Tender or was it I in? I believe it is. Was it in Mystery Booster or something like that? I feel like it's barely been reprinted. So still probably a kind of exciting reprint for that card. And it's like, I prefer the chippy art, but not by much. I honestly really like this. I really like this Archaeomancer and like, that's a card I play. So I don't know. Maybe I want to get the one of The Meteor Golem capitalizing on, on the internet's newfound love of giant women, I assume. <laughs> well, newfound publicly acknowledged love at least. Also, there's the complete edition, very funny, of the Phyrexian Praetors. So all five of the Scars of Mirrodin block Phyrexian Praetors printed in the Phyrexian language with the cool border like mm -hmm. Vorinclex had on Kaldheim. So it's Elish Norn, Jinga Taxis, Sheldred, Urabrask, and Vorinclex Voice of Hunger. I'm I mean, for these. I don't know. It's kind of annoying to judges that they're reprinting this Elish Norn, but I think it's the second time in the past month they've done that. So mm. what, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the the judge foil Elish, Phyrexian Elish Norn probably still has like recognizable swag. Yeah. No, that's fair. I mean, you can tell the printings apart. So that's. Yeah. It, it has a cleaner border. Rather like confusingly timed is mother's day 2021 it's releasing yeah on it, father's day <laughs> on father's day i think <laughs> just about yeah it's kind of funny but yeah it's uh, four copies of mother of runes borderless illustrated by Lee Prima, Elliot Mitchell, and Rebecca Gay. Hey, Rebecca Gay's back. The actual description on the Secret Lair site is like, and yes, you read that correctly, Rebecca Gay is back. Yeah, pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. So there's four really cool illustrations on Mother of Runes there. Weirdly timed, but a very cool set. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. honestly, the ones that excite me the most is this pair of drops by Dan Fraser, and it's the Ravnica Signets. One is the Allied Signets, and one is the enemy signets and they're printed in the old border style and if you're unfamiliar with dan fraser by name probably best known art is for illustrating the original moxes and so they got dan fraser to illustrate the guild signets in the style of the original moxes and they look amazing it's pretty great yeah yeah i really really like these i think they're interesting i kind of actually love gruel signet the most as being like these two uncut gems tied together with leather yeah. straps i'm a big fan of the 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 orzhov one demir looks really cool i like the boros one with the balancing shields yeah the selesnia one also yeah. i really enjoy it because it's such an interesting take on the idea of growth because mm -hmm. it's it's wild crystal yeah right it's a naturally forming like crystal formation which i think is like a very selesnia way of looking at a mineral yeah right like if you've got to have like this artificial me metallic thing then it should grow wild this is really cool. Yeah. yeah. What I'm also really, really excited about for these ones in particular is that all the other ones that I've mentioned are available in regular or in foil. And these two only are available in regular or foil etched. Yeah. No idea what that's going to look like. I don't know. Have I even seen an old border foil etched card yet? Has, has that been happening for the last couple sets? Oh. There's, yeah. There's been some in uh, Modern Horizons 2. Okay. Right. So it actually says on the thing, it's like, what is foil etched? Traditional foil cards have a rainbow holographic pattern with a smooth surface in the foiling. Foil etched cards have a texture in the foil. It also helps them not be curly. Right. They, they've been a success. The, yeah. The foil etched have been a success in the packaging. Okay. I, I think I might be getting these. They keep growing on me. And like the signets are always useful. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm I'm probably in for the signets to be perfectly honest. And then of course there's the the like bonkers priced, but technically with the savings bundles of everything. You can get everything in not foil, everything in foil, and then also just everything of everything, which is all of both. And the price is oops all fours. Yeah. It's $444.44. Hmm. which is technically a savings of over $110 compared to buying everything individually, if that is something that you are into. Congrats, capitalism. You've gotten us to think of that. <laughs> yeah. We consider spending like... <laughs> you know, a rent payment as gaining a savings. <laughs> I mean, I remember, I remember playing Warhammer way back in the day and looking at a box of like vampire knights that had just been released and thinking $120 isn't a bad price for five models and just <laughs> wanting to stuff myself in a locker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to say about the Dan Fraser signets, it kind of feels like, I think it is a really cool use of secret layer because, and, and kudos for pulling it off. Like, I don't know how hard it was to get Dan Fraser to come back. I know he hasn't done any magic art recently other than this uh, that we know of. And uh, it just 
just really feels like a, a cool use of like the kind of alternate universe feeling of Secret Lair where you're like, well, okay, hey, what if we had done a bunch of things better off the hop in Magic, right? Like, you know, everybody likes the Moxes, but like, what if they were the Signets instead? Or what if we had just kept Dan Fraser around to do the Signets, like, you know, a third of the way into the current Magic history? They Gosh. also feel like... I think quite successfully, like what the pop, at least what the popular conception of medieval jewelry would look like, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're not quite as, as fine as, well, except for the Golgari one as the, as the current signets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. I dig it. All right. So yeah, there's a butt ton of secret layers. They're on sale by the time you're hearing this. So if that's something that you're into, go do that. Or you can not, because I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. But what I am going to tell you is the answers to these questions that you asked. So let's start with that. And one that actually sort of leads in neatly from talking about a bunch of the stuff that we just were talking about with the secret layers. First question here from Ral. Do you have any favorite magic artists? And is there a card that you'd love to have with artwork done by them? I would love a Wiley Beckert brainstorm. Love to oh, see yeah. what she'd do with that subject. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I would go for more hand attack spells from Wiley Becker to really like go blank. I thought that mm -hmm. one was fantastic. So like a thought seizer or duress by Wiley Becker would also be cool. I like Seb McKinnon and I would like more lands from Seb McKinnon. Currently you can get a swamp, but it's pretty expensive. But you know, I would be very excited if we got like a full art land that's in a booster pack or like a cycle of them that were done by Seb McKinnon. I'm a big fan of Raymond Swanland when we started playing, when we came back to the game, when I came back to the game anyway. It was around when Zendikar was in standard and all of Swanland's uh, very spiky, pointy creatures I thought looked really cool. And, you know, over the over the years, he's, uh, you know, like shaved down the points here and there. But I just I really like that that kind of style. I don't know what like is there a card maybe from like Strixhaven that I think would be cool to have seen with his with that style. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the most recent set. Hmm. I can't think of like a card that I would want. He probably would have done a good grape shot or Ooh. tainted pact. I yeah, think. yeah, in the, uh, the the mystical archives. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of mystical archives, actually, I also, I think I, I, I happen to like really like the art of some of the artists that no longer work with Magic the Gathering for non-art related reasons. And uh, I think they could have done some good ones in mystical archives. I won't mention them here, but yeah, that does come to mind. Mm -hmm. It's like Lash of Malice could have been... Uh... That could have been a cool Swanland for sure. Cool Swanland. Maybe the explosive welcome, some of the like the the Prismari spells with lots of fireworks. Blot out the sky. Hear me out. Mm. The cards from Strixhaven that are not from the school, right? Oh, like the Wandering Archaic? That could have been a great Swanland, actually, yeah. Or the Blood Demon. Blood oh, Avatar. Yeah. Oh, the Blood Demon. That would have been a wild Swanland piece. Yeah. Right? You're just like you're in Strixhaven, everything is very not Raymond Swanland, except for this thing, which is. And that would be a kind of like very interesting art declaration, right? Of its alienness. Yeah. Now, Swanland did actually have art in the set. He did Belladross Witherbloom, you know, but I, again, it over the years, his art has sort of like fit in a little more and been less distinctly like, well, that's spiky as hell. Who's Oz? Oh, that guy's that's gotta be Swanland. You know, it's a little mm. bit more sort of in keeping with the rest of the set, but still very cool. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Also just all the ones that everybody else said and, and likes. Yeah. I'm a big fan of a lot of the magic artists. Like I'd love, you know, I, I love getting to see new Rebecca uh, gay paintings. I mean, I do also quite like Wayne Reynolds, who did Wandering Archaic, right? Like, I'm not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rain yeah, yeah, yeah. Is great. Steve Argyle has lots of good stuff. They've got, they're getting new people in regularly. I don't know how to say this correctly, but it's like Tien Hu X as some of my favorite land paintings, like over the years. And mm -hmm. I also like, I want to say Jason Cho. There's been some, some just fantastic basic land art in the past five years. Yeah. Yeah, I think on that note, I think Elena Danner has done a bunch of really sweet stuff yep. on the basic land front. Sam Burley. I'd like to see Chippy come back for something. Sure. Bring back Chippy Esper art. <laughs> yeah. Chippy God Esper. Hmm. I also quite like yeah, absolutely. Igor Kirlyuk, Kirlyuk yep. whose first stuff, I think, for who, that his first stuff was the Living Weapons. Ooh, right, yes. So they were like, they were like, he did most of the Living Weapons, so they were really distinct looking. And again has done other stuff since then that's less like visually separated from other art in the sets. But in the Scars block, having the living weapons be a like very distinct visual, I thought was really cool. So okay. next question, Lotus Bloom asks, what's your favorite new card of 2020? Ooh, I kind of like 
the uh, sorry was it underworld revolt like the one red and one generic enchantment from theros that gives everything in your graveyard escape underworld breach underworld breach thank you yeah uh, it's yeah. like it's like kind of a busted card but it was a cool busted card that like i don't know just worked in a, in a different way than most of the other busted cards felt like like you know <laughs> does that make sense like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it wasn't yeah. like a particularly subtle card and it was like clearly going to be broken you know in older formats but I just I enjoyed the way that it kind of shifted the tapestry of Canadian Highlander. I was like, "That's Theros Beyond Death." The question said 2020, and and yeah, that that was absolutely 2020. That was <laughs> January 2020. Lol. Jeez. So I guess we're looking at Theros Coria. I mean, Corset and Zendikar. Zendikar Rising. Yeah. Plus, like whatever supplemental stuff. Like I don't know, is Rick from 2020? Is that anyone's favorite card? Which one? Rick from from The Walking Dead. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's a card from 2020, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Strictly speaking, that that sure is. What, what did I really like? I mean, I guess uh, what was it? Rampart from Ikoria. I thought was a really interesting take on a, on a uh, blood artist. Oh yeah, battlements or something. Or the the yeah. Bastion. 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 The- Bastion of Remembrance. Bastion, Bastion of Remembrance. Bastion of Remembrance. Yeah. See, I'm good at things. Yeah, I thought that was that was that was quite odd. I liked it. What else? 2020 was just kind of a blur. Tbh. I like yeah. the tri. I like the triomes. Like yes, yeah. Like they're clearly a pushed card, but you know the the philosophy of like modern land creation just kind of seems to be like okay we've tried various different things with like how much we ratchet up how good the mana bases are but we figured out in standard we just like always want it to be good enough that you can play three color decks if you want to so just make sure that there are lands so that people can cast their spells and that's great it turns out that's just a win for everybody people playing mono colored or zero colored decks are still you know happy like they're not gonna be mad about it and people that want to play greedier mana bases have more options. And I still think there's some balance to the triumphs. I like them a lot. I know that Omnath was very quickly determined to be absolutely busted and needed mm-hmm. needed to be dealt with. But I do, I, I do like Omnath just like in general, like I had an Omnath commander deck way back with the, the green one. Hmm. And this, like this new Omnath was very cool. It was a really cool ability. It ended up being way too powerful, but you know, it was like, oh, neat. Hey, what a what you know? What a cool idea that it like rewards you for making multiple land drops in a turn. You know, like oh, that's neat and definitely not abusable and 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 <laughs> ultimately a mistake. But you know, I, I thought Omnath was cool. Yeah, I mean, I I remember that spoiler thread for Omnath and people complaining that it only got one or once you had all the triggers, it didn't get any more. Right, and it was underpowered. Right. Just going to file that one away with the Jace the Mind Sculptor <laughs> uh, spoiler <laughs> discussion. Um, but I maybe Croxa is actually my favorite. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Croxa's from that year, too. Yeah. I know, right? It's a, it's a good know. card. I like that one. Yeah. Of the Escape Titans, mm. uh, I feel Croxa hit the sweet spot, unlike some <laughs> yeah. other Titans I could mention. <laughs> <laughs> I'll politely That's refrain awesome. from discussing at this time. Right? Yeah. Who I will not name by name. Yeah. Deprive it the oxygen of attention. Oh man, you know what was in Corset 2020? Yarok. Oh, what? Really? That was 2020? No. Yeah. That's not right. Yeah. The five mana three five that doubles triggers? Yeah. Okay, well, it wasn't the first printing because I remember playing in paper commander with Adam playing that deck. Oh, I know what the problem is, is I was looking at Corset 2020, but it would have been Corset 2021 is the one that mm-hmm. came out in 2020. Mm-hmm. Yes, Neo. So there's, I was traveling through time in the wrong direction. Oh, gosh. Akoria also gave us Sprite Dragon. Oh, and yeah. while I haven't had a ton of reps of that card yet, it clearly like has my name written all over it. There was a lot of really cool stuff in Ikoria. I liked the mm-hmm. Mutate. That was neat. It was clearly like a pretty pushed set, like yeah. the... Yeah, there's a lot of really powerful stuff. Here's one that was actually in in the proper core set, Sublime Epiphany. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Four blue blue instant with four modes, and you could choose as many as you want. Counter a spell, counter an activated or triggered ability, return a permanent to its owner's hand, create a token that's a copy of a creature you control, and target player draws a card. A whole new way of comboing with Eternal Witness, <laughs> right? Like Cryptic Command, that's... That's old and busted. But Sublime Epiphany for a mere nine mana. Yeah. <laughs> right. Gargaroth was first printed in M21. Uh, another name I will not speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I played a deck with Terror of the Peaks and Gargaroth for a while there. The Naya ramp, or not Naya, Teamer ramp deck. Yeah. 
I mean, it still bothers me intensely that Gargaroth is not standard playable. Yeah, or Questing Beast, both. I mean, isn't that weird? Your opponent sits down across from you and like plays a tap land and then a Mana Dork on two and then proceeds to play Questing Beast into Elder Gargaroth on turn four. And it's like, yeah, what's what's this jank pile you brought? <laughs> like, oh, I remember my first deck. Is it I don't more know. playable in Historic then? I definitely saw it at one of the championships. Yeah, no, it, it the Gargaroth was in this deck I'm describing that was like a top tier deck that was, you know, doing the doing the lotus cobra into beanstalk giant and like uh, going for the the ultimate and the cast a bunch of spells but i don't know the meta shifted away from that deck i can't exactly tell you why but probably because it's bad to rogues i would guess because rogues has been a pretty big deal since zendikar right. came out which is after the sets we're talking about stupid rogues yeah rogues <laughs> important important part of the the shakedown but yeah 2020 i don't know i didn't like the limited sets as much as call time which was 2021 and then yeah standard standard was all about 2019 and has been since thrones come out so yeah, yeah maybe we're going to find some of these 2020 cards that are really cool and fun to play with in the fall like which i guess only means the zendikar ones but that's still possible i'm i'm still kind of hoping that we see some kind of like party mechanic standard deck that comes out maybe after the next dnt set but maybe it just needs the throne cards to rotate but once we have a small standard format again maybe we'll see uh spoils of adventure get cast or yeah I don't know. Yeah, some more of the sweet party card. Like, is there going to be a Zagras deck? If you have a full party, Zagras is a two mana, four, four flying haste. Come on. Whoa. Speaking of the D&D set, actually, our next question from Michael is, what's made you more excited? Magic in your D&D or D&D in your magic? Oh, I Cameron should probably answer this one. Yeah. I really like my my magic in my D&D. I like the way of, I like exploring these worlds through means other than the wholesale slaughter <laughs> implied by magic cards, <laughs> right? Like, I really, really enjoyed playing in Ravnica because Ravnica, I don't know how you have a 10,000-year-old ecumenopolis that is in a constant state of war because i mean look at any picture of city that's of a city that's been afflicted by armed conflict and it's not in good shape after a couple of weeks right yeah. and the idea that ravnica is kind of constantly in a state of armed insurrection or like civil war is not really that's not sustainable so being able to explore it as just like a person who is living there I thought was a lot of fun. Yeah, I like the the idea that Ravnica is sort of a jungle, but it's also a city, right? Like it's like unpredictable and unsafe, but but civilized somehow. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I I definitely agree with that. I'm excited to maybe someday do something with the Theros source book that they've released. They did a Innistrad one as well. Like I I I don't I just I just don't have that much time to play D and D, which is a shame. But I love the idea of of exploring those worlds in a way that isn't strictly combat, but that has combat, but that isn't just combat. Yeah, uh, yeah. That said, what little they've spoiled of the Forgotten Realms set is also very cool. Yeah, I think the honest answer for me is the D and D and my magic, because that's the thing I'm going to do more. I did just appear on Dice Friends for the first time this spring, but I ha don't I don't D and D very often. It's just kind of like the sort of third priority in my gaming life or whatever. But uh, I I agree with Cam. Like I think it's it's great to have the opportunity to try to like relish the rich worlds of Mat of Magic the Gathering without like you know just only firing lightning bolts at each other. But mm -hmm. but probably I'm going to get more use out of the D&D &D and my magic coming up here. Yeah, I mean, that's also true of me. Yeah. Lord Hosk asks, what is the best black magic card in Innistrad that costs one black to cast and flashes back for five and a red? Hmm. Is it, <laughs> I can't think of anything. What's that? Is there? Is it Triskaidekaphobia or Fires of Undeath? I forget. I have no memory of this place. That's so weird. Yeah. Huh. May Keeble asks, does anyone else feel kind of dehydrated? Like your head hurts a little bit? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Might have bonked into something. I've got my ears suddenly. What's been your favorite card released so far in 2021? There we go. So sort of a, com a companion to that previous question. Sculptor of Winter. Ooh. I don't know. Like, I just did a lot of... Like, honestly, like, my happiest magic experience of this year has just been playing, like, Gladiator and Arena. Like, the first Fam Jam was pretty fun. That's kind of at the center of that. The PPRs have also been great, but, like, related to the cards. I just like getting to draft five color all the time or, or you know, however many colors you get bombs for in in the snow set of call time yeah call time was was a ton of fun i definitely enjoyed call time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to think of what my favorite card would be that's tough i like a lot of different cards for different reasons i like some because they're stupid i like some because they're powerful i like some because the art is neat yeah like hmm. oh yeah i guess i could also have answered this preordain that's in the mail i i think i'm just honestly really happy to see uh turok that's cool yeah and, oh and uh 
Those are oh, two yeah. like shout outs from Fallen Empires. I was just mm-hmm. kind of happy to see, right? I think the Svelanites were the first, or the first time we saw them was in Fallen Empires. They were the merfolk, or she was the merfolk god. That sounds right. And Turak, I mean, <laughs> needs no introduction. But if you want one, there's a great crap shot I can send you to. Yeah. Aggressive, evasive, efficient is he. <laughs> also, damn. Mm. Oh, yeah. Damn. Damn's a good card. Ben Wheeler talked a couple of weeks ago at, at like, how well-designed Dam is. That's so good. Right? Like... Being able to be hit by modern stapled two mana counter spell that counters a two mana spell. Brain. Oh. It's not spell stutter. Spell it's snare. A, spell snare. Yeah, there we go. Or Inquisition of Kozlek also takes it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a very interesting little bit of design. I don't have a good specific answer, I'm afraid. Fair. Whatever's in the next pack he opens. Yeah. Oh, Sinister Starfish. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. Sinister Starfish is sweet. Who doesn't love Sinister Starfish? What kind of person? I like Glimmer Baron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that little guy. A- Aqua Amoeba, or what's it called? Air Amoeba wants to be your favorite card. Yeah, no kidding. It keeps showing up. Ender asks, what alternate art or alternate border styles would you like to see more of in the future? Well, the border styles have sort of changed every time when they do like showcase frames or whatever. Generally speaking, I've enjoyed all of them. I'm a fan of less busy borders Mm -hmm. right i like the borderless cards but honestly i think my favorite are still just the old borders yeah honestly Um, i find like the new legendary border honestly kind of distracting even though it's not new anymore it's just it's a few years old now that's fair the like the not work ones from call time again just a bit busy same with the the storybook ones from eldraine just give me like cleaner designs please the cleanest designs. I quite like, it's funny. I quite like all those ones that you mentioned specifically. I also agree with you. Like I love oh. clean design, <laughs> but I thought that those were also pretty cool. I don't know. Like they're, they're pretty. They're definitely pretty. I, I really like un- unhinged lands. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of art, not all art, but like a, you know, a thin border, a border that feels like it's it's gotten out of the way, but it's mm. there, mm. and like it mm. kind of makes it, makes it feel like the art really pops without you know the edge of your deck being a different color in different places. I really liked the flat graphic style of the Ikoria showcase cards. Yeah, the mutate mm. cards that look like comic yeah. book art. Those those looked great. Yes, yes, those those were cool. I'd like to see more kind of you know playing with playing with the the style as well. I think that'd be neat. Harrison. <laughs> with with a big question here thoughts on the opinion that commander killed pro magic that seems like a weird stretch it yeah i mean it's an argument that people are making like the okay the in the interest of i guess playing devil's advocate the argument is that because commander is so popular that wizards is shifting the eye of sauron from pro play to commander players and so they're taking budget away from pro play and putting it into commander stuff and i think that that is misunderstanding several yeah. different steps not least of which because there is no did i miss a commander pro tour or hmm. like when 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 was the commander like prize purse announced well a command fest happened yeah we had a command fest mm-hmm. the, like the thing is but it didn't have prizes like it, it, if you you look purely at the calculus, like if if your argument is that Wizards is saying that pro magic doesn't make them enough money and commander makes them more, pro magic has has like never made them that much money on its own, strictly speaking, compared to other aspects, right? Like they have this data, right, of like how many people play magic compared to how many people participate in pro level or competitive magic play or even are aware that competitive magic play exists, right? And it's a very small percentage of the broader people who play magic. Yeah, James, you can totally chime in. So I think a big reason why this argument might be gaining steam right now is is probably a direct result of this weird period that we now exist in where we just don't know what, you know, finger quotes, professional magic is going to look like. You know, they came out a few weeks ago with the state of OP and how everything is going to be changing in the near future, but they didn't have any actual answers or, or you know, uh, a plan that they could give us, which means now we just have to assume that professional magic is dead. Well, what killed it? How about the most popular thing that's left, which 
is commander. So I, I feel like this, yeah, a lot of this, this argument stems from, we just don't know what the future of not even just professional magic, but also just competitive magic. And obviously we talked, I talked at length about this in an episode a few weeks ago. I think this is just another issue where if you give us the teeniest bit of, of information, but don't give us the full picture, then you're just going to let people like this run rampant with these theories that Commander killed Pro Magic when you you are probably so very far from the truth on that so i just think it's such a tenuous connection yeah i mean but but it's a connection that can be made when we have nowhere else to go right like we can't point towards what it's going to look like in the future so we'll just figure out why it's like this in the in the in the present so i don't know i want to i want to play opposite devil's advocate or whatever and i think the big issue here is just that it's like difficult for wizards to see the return on the pro tour because the idea right from the business side of you is that it's advertising more or less right like we we like set this awesome tournament up and look you could be a part of it or at least you can reap the rewards of it happening so that you can get deck lists or tips or learn how to play the game better and then the return for wizards is supposed to be just like selling more booster packs right like getting you know more cases of cards out of their warehouse and that because people are going to the local game stores to buy these cards and build these decks and play competitive magic but like obviously casual drafters and of course commander players buy those packs too so if you want to believe like because commander exists and that's just the reason that is driving people to buy cards now instead of needing to or wanting to play competitive like 60 card formats or competitive limited like sure that might be the case it's tenuous because it's almost impossible for wizards to know if they're even making a good decision or not right mm -hmm. like maybe the pro tour maybe cra ca crashing the pro tour is going to end up costing the millions but it's like kind of impossible to know I, th I think anyway maybe we could like start having a mandatory survey or something every time i sell a booster pack at yj it's like hey i need you to fill out this 20 minute long form census about why you bought this pack so that wizards can figure out if they can bring the portrait back or not. I mean, the other th the other thing though is that I, I feel like we've been hearing for years that Commander has been and and continues to be the most popular way people play this game. And again, it, it feels like we've been hearing that for you know almost five years now, and yet they still pursued an entire new way of of tackling pro magic in those last five years. So I I, I don't know. I just don't feel like the argument holds up. Yeah, I think that you can you you can be worried or mad about the state of pro play and be concerned that we don't have any information and that can be a problem and whenever that comes out if you don't like that then that can be you know you can and should make your voice heard and be annoyed at wizards if you think that they made decisions that you disagree with i think it is laughable to say oh that happened because of commander yeah you're you're blaming a format and everyone who plays it for what is ultimately a business decision of wizards that might be a bad decision that you might hate i don't want pro magic to go away i like pro magic i like watching the pro tour and the mythic championships and and all that yeah i spend more money on magic because of pro magic yeah but if it if they gut it if it turns into something you know not bad that you don't like it's not gonna be because of commander like i i i i, I think the thesis is flawed is basically what i'm saying yeah mm -hmm. i agree with that mm -hmm. all right well we'll move on then feel free to keep uh poking your head in james next a question from tara what is your favorite non-fetchable land or land cycle that taps for more than one color that's a very specific question so non-fetchable land or cycle that taps for more than one color I just need to liquid swords in here and say Carews. Oh, yeah. Carews are good. Carews. You just like hip check Graham away from the microphone. <laughs> and you just like you hear me coming for like 10 seconds beforehand. It's just like bum, 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 bum. <laughs> as I'm reading the question, you just hear like. <laughs> <laughs> Carews. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on Shadowmoor Eventide filter lands. Oh, like the Graven Cairns and that ilk. In specific, Fetid Heath, which like I always played one of in my Black White Legacy deck. And also just like in Highlander decks or or in six card back when you could do that, it was just like the most interesting exercise to figure out like, okay, how many of these do I run? Because you can do too many. And then like if you have a handful of them on an, on an open, you're like, oh, can't cast any spells, even though like these lands turn your mana every color once you get started. So yeah, I just really like that, in, that, that mechanic, the play of those mm -hmm. cards. That, that 
that is actually quite fair. Yeah, the, 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 great the math too. around those those lands is it always got me. Actually, we're just being honest. Had to cut Graven Cairns because it made me make bad decisions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, like in Highlander decks, like if you're playing three colors, you probably only play like all three of them if you have kind of a high land count and like barely any or zero colorless lands, right? Because mm -hmm. even getting two in an opening hand is tricky. That reminds me, though, I need to pick up a foil Graven Cairns. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh, with, with the alt border art? Spicy. Our next question. I agree with Cameron, by the way. Our next question is would you rather a battle bond two or a conspiracy three or new mystery boosters this question is from melissa i think i'm gonna have to go with uh, more mystery boosters here i'm on battle bond two i think i'm on conspiracy three sweet our powers combined <laughs> yeah not bad everyone nobody's yeah. gonna be happy <laughs> <laughs> i mean all three of these will be great right but yeah. i think i think maybe battle bond i don't know it just seems like there's probably just as much room left to play mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. there was to build conspiracy two and i actually didn't like conspiracy two as much as conspiracy one so i'm a little nervous for conspiracy three although to be fair like i do love the format I just like Conspiracy One more. And I haven't played a Mystery Booster draft yet. Tears. Oh, yeah. So it, it's I, good. I would love to play Mystery Booster number one. <laughs> this next question is interesting. General consensus is that there are too many products these days. I, for the purposes of this question, we will accept that as, as general consensus. If you were to cut one product from last year, what would it be and why? This question is from Nico. So in 2020, we had, just pulling up a list here. Well, Mystery Booster, Signature Spellbook Chandra, Double Masters, a deck builder toolkit for Theros. I don't think that necessarily counts. The Ikoria Commander set, which was also Commander 2020, so five of those. Commander Legends, and then, as you mentioned, Theros Beyond Death, Ikoria, Lair of Behemoth, Zendikar Rising, and Core Set 2021. And then a bunch of secret layers. Double Masters, maybe? Double Masters, like, made zero impression on me. We got to draft in the woods. That was sweet. Yeah, I enjoyed drafting in the woods, but that, that set could just go away, and I don't think we would have lost anything from 2020. Yeah, the set was kind of wasn't that big a deal. It was a fun BPR. Like I really liked the count punt, uh, punt counterpunt we did for that too. But yeah, like the set itself. Uh, I I mean one master set a year, please. Yeah, because we had that. That was technically the master set, and then there was but there was also Commander Legends. Yeah, Commander yeah. Legends definitely felt like a master set, right? Yeah, it's like. The Oubliette reprint probably could have gone into Commander Legends and nobody would have been that hurt by it, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, there's just yeah. so many of these master sets. Oh, right. There was the unsanctioned, like, weird constructed unset, kind of, that was yeah, also in 2020. Yeah. I... I don't think I opened any of that. Me unless neither. Unless I played in the pre-pre-release. We didn't do a PPR for that one. We did a Friday Night Paper Fight. I've never played it. Are we sure? I, I'm sure I've never played it. <laughs> okay. Is this the one where you have like five half decks and you put yeah. them together? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No, that wasn't the best set of the year. It was okay. I don't it, think it was not bad. to exist. We could probably still lose Double Masters. I guess Jumpstart was 2020 and I'll fight you. Yeah, I will fight anyone who tries to cut Jumpstart. I mean, it was 2020, right? So, like, we didn't have, like, limited Grand Prix to go to or even FNM, really. So, obviously, like, Jumpstart and Commander Legends were just, like, destined to be the best sets of the year because they're, like, the ones that made the most sense for how we played Magic that year. Yeah. I just want to get rid of all the secret layers that you can't buy in a local reasonable and throw them into the sun. Gabriel asks, will Friday nights ever come back? Now, we recently, as I mentioned, we put up a YouTube update on the Loading Ready Run channel and in it i mentioned sort of offhandedly that you know that, that won't it be nice when we can finally get back together and start making content again you know such as and i listed off a bunch of options and one of the things i mentioned was filming friday nights and a bunch of folks were like holy crap what he said it is this what confirmation and uh, that was a surprise to me because we we have never not confirmed that it, we have always maintained that we had intended to be filming friday nights in 2020 and then this whole pandemic happened um so yes friday nights will return we're gonna do our own season of it a uh, number of episodes yet to be determined at some point and it will probably feature its uh, own small crowdfunding camp specifically for itself because it's sort of beyond well because frankly because wizard isn't paying us to do it anymore and we would like to do it but if you would like to see it someone's got to pay us the extra to do it taps palm yeah and so but yeah we we absolutely had always intended to do more friday nights and maintain that we are going to do more friday nights and so that that has not changed more Friday nights is still on the menu. When? Still don't know, but watch this space for updates, I guess. Amphi Octopus asks, any recommendations on what set 
sets or packs to draft for a group who are all new to drafting. We've done lots of commander, so we understand magic well enough, but most of us have not drafted before. Ooh. Anything that says core set on it. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think of like what got me into drafting. Oh, Dominaria is also pretty good, actually. Dominaria can be very powerful. But I think it's it's kind of straightforward to the draft. Like, I don't remember like getting too many confusing drafts of Dominaria. That's fair. Like, I think I, this is extremely unhelpful, but what got me into drafting, what sold me on the entire like concept of drafting was Innistrad, which yeah. is just like, yeah, mm. you know, all you need to do is track down some Innistrad boosters and then like open them. Just, Still a lot of people's favorite set of all time. Yeah. For, li for limited. Yeah. But yeah, Dominaria was really good. I liked Eldraine has so much text. What was recent? Actually, it had the most tech. Well, Call Time I thought was really good, but it also yeah. has a lot of text. Yeah, Call Time. Actually, Eldraine is not terrible for a first round draft because you get your incentivized he pretty heavily to play one color. Right. So like that can, that can help out, you know, early drafters. The recent Ravnica sets, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, in a similar vein, have very defined lanes. Yeah. Like um, if you're in Guilds of Ravnica, you're only going to be playing one of five color pairs. Two color pairs, yeah. I also really like drafting with Eldritch Moon more recently. Madness and Emerge are just cool, cool keywords. I think they're cool, cool abilities on cards. Maybe don't there, do this. It. Yeah, don't do this most recent Masters set. It might not have the most words on cards ever, but it's got like several cards with just one one ability. Or sorry, an ability word that no other cards have. So I mean Modern Horizons 2. It's not a Masters. It's not a Masters, wink. But yeah, I would save Modern Horizons 2. I, even though there's a ton of words on the cards, Call Time is like not that bad for beginners, I don't think. You just want to be a color pair. They're all good. There's lots of signals because of the uncommon lands, which like don't go that high in draft, but they're still just sort of like, well, if you, you know, if it's late in the pack and your neighbor passes you Port of Carfell, you probably know they're not in blue black. Like if it wheels and there's only two cards left or whatever, it's like if your neighbor's in, in blue black and there's three cards left in the pack, they're probably going to take that Port of Carfell. So there's little things like that. And then also the fact that just you can play five color, I think is like good for some new players where just like, oh, I'll just take some. If by the end of pack one, you'd have no idea what's going on, just like try to lean into taking green fixing and just play whatever good cards you get. Awesome. And our last question from Carsonogenics is what set that released during the inside times are you most excited to draft? I assume that means like draft in person. It's got to be called time, right? Commander Legends for me. Yeah. Oh, man. Mystery Booster? <laughs> Oh, boosties, boosties, boosties. Boosties did come out like there were two Grand Prix that had them available. I like, got to play a bunch of it at PAX East. So like I have gotten mm -hmm. to play mystery boosties in person and I want to do it again. It came out in December, right? Or, or early January, I want to say. Well, the store version came out more recently, right? Right. Like it was only at conventions until March or April, which was really like August or something by the time Yellow Jack had some. But yeah, it's like the regular, the standard releases, you know, if you're used to just playing 1v1 draft, you did get to do that on Arena. But I guess the MTGO sets, it's like, yeah, any of the Modern Horizons, Double Master, there's another one over the past 18 months, I think. I mean, Modern Horizons, Horizons 2. Time Spiral Remastered. Time Spiral Remastered. Yeah, haven't gotten to draft that except... No, we played Sealed, didn't we? At the PBR. Yeah. Yeah, I still haven't drafted it. Anything that's only been available to draft on Magic Online. Basically. And I think I think Commander Legends is probably the top of my list there just because like Conspiracy, they tricked me into enjoying multi again. <laughs> like they did they did a really good job with the draft format, I think, for Commander Legends. <laughs> and I've gotten to draft it once, which is probably more than like a lot of Magic players, but I, I had a really good time. Nice. All right. Well, that was all the questions and we're coming up on the hour uh, before editing. So it seems like a fine time to wrap it up and you can get your magic cards wrapped up and sent to you wherever you live in the world by Card Kingdom, who sponsored the show. Check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR. Tell them we sent you. They'll give you a button that says changelings are cowards. They're a great bunch of folks. Also a great bunch of folks, all of you who support us directly on our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. And always, thank you for listening. I'm Graham and joining me has been Cameron. Huh? Nelson. I'm just slipping on these buttery smooth transitions. And uh, James briefly. Insert sound of James voice here. No, I'm here. What up? Bye. <laughs> James also ran the card reader today. Jordan edits these. Heather gets them online. And then you all listen to them. So you see everyone's involved. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.